The scripture says, no discipline at the time seems pleasant, but later on, you will reap a harvest of good things. Being disciplined is not easy. Walking away when someone is rude, not giving in to the temptation, getting up early to excel at work, that's difficult. Your flesh wants to be comfortable. Your flesh wants the easy way out, but you can't be comfortable all the time and reach your destiny. If you'll do the hard thing now, later on, you'll see blessings and favor that you've never seen. Sometimes you've got to get low before you can go high. The harder you fall, the higher you bounce. I tell you, it's, it's been a few times when I felt like quitting and like giving up, but there's a great promise. Let us not be weary in well-doing. You will reap if you don't quit, if you don't faint. Tonight, I don't know where you're at on this journey. And I don't know what life looks like for you right now. But I know this. If you're ever going to be who God's called you to be, it's going to require confidence. And if you've lost it, you've got to find it. And if you've misplaced it, you've got to get it back. See, right now, here's what we know. Life is fragile. It's fragile. And, and, and so you could, you could be here today, gone today. But when there's something that, that's in your heart, there's something that you know, you can't, you can't explain it. It's not logical. It's not practical. And, and it's not realistic. Right. It's not. All of us the same. The only thing that separates us is our vision of ourselves and our habits. You have to set your face. The people that need to be for you will be for you. People that will celebrate you. People that will cheer you on. People that stick with you through thick and thin. But too often, we're trying to convince people to be our friend, convince them to spend time with us. But if someone doesn't see the gift that you are, if they don't recognize your talents, value your friendship, do yourself a favor and move on. No offense, but they are not a part of your destiny. You're so busy starving the sapling, trying to get to the tree, that you cancel out the potential of being a tree because you don't see where you are. You're in love with tomorrow, but you're neglecting today. Until you are faithful over the few, you cannot be ruler over the many. So you need to take your eye off of the tree and water what you got now. The older we get, the more we realize we're not going to be here forever. Life is flying by. When you realize how fast time is going, it should bring a sense of urgency, a sense of focus. Your assignment has an expiration date. Your time on this earth is not unlimited. Don't go through life trying to please everyone. If you try to keep every person happy, the one person that won't be happy is you. There's a process to becoming successful, to releasing your greatness, to identifying your goals and, and, and being able to, to go through the hoops. And it takes energy to live the life that you want to live. And most people are not willing to change their habits. They just want to do what they want to do. There's a process. And the ones who break through like me, you got to be hungry. Everything you ever thought you would not make it through, you got past it. Now, if you're currently going through something right now, guess what? You're going to get past that too. It always works that way. You always do. Come out from under that debt. Be nice. Go the extra mile. But don't be a people pleaser. And in order for you to say yes to some things, you got to say no to a lot of other things. Where you end up depends upon which road you take. Where you end up in eternity will be determined by the road you take here on earth. When you do discover a cause worth dying for, and you do realize it's worth living for, how many know it's worth giving for? It's worth working for? It's worth sacrificing for? But what I've learned is, is that if you don't have confidence, You'll never walk out your cause. 
Satisfaction comes out of the struggles you choose to take on and the problems you choose to solve. It's not a mystery. It's really not complicated and you don't have to fail a bunch of times to get it. This is what success is, the experiences you choose to have and the satisfaction they bring. There's no mystery here. Success plays out differently for each of us. Your job is to make sure that you know what that looks like for you. You're not the nut you used to be, but you're not the tree you're gonna be. But until you learn how to appreciate where you are in the process, you won't get the power to evolve to your ultimate destiny. Some people won't understand you. They'll get upset when you break out of the box. Someone told me, Joel, you've forgotten where we've come from. I thought I haven't forgotten. I just didn't want to stay there. Don't get stuck in the past. Don't get stuck in tradition. So the key to your life is finding a vision that imposes discipline on you. In essence, vision is the source of discipline. Discipline is the root of leadership. It actually is the, the very nature that attracts people to you. A disciplined person naturally begins to attract people because people admire discipline in other people. That's why we go to see athletes perform. We really admire their discipline that they put themselves through. If you do the same thing as a person, people will then begin to believe what you say. Your very life of discipline creates trust. People trust a person who they perceive to be disciplined. You're going to get what you focus on. What you focus on gets larger and larger in your life. It grows. It's like, like if you look at what's wrong with your life, you can actually get to the point where you just hate your life. And you think that you've got the worst life ever when really somebody else might look at your life and they might actually wish they had your life because they're seeing the stuff that you quit looking at a long time ago because you're so busy looking at all the stuff you don't like, you've forgotten what you do like. You might marry somebody and you might get so focused on what you don't like that you forgot what you liked about them that caused you to want to marry them to start with. Go ahead and work on your level. Go ahead and master where you are. And after a while, without you even trying to do it, where you started will turn into where you're going. That's what destiny is pulling you into. From the rehearsal to the recital, once you have mastered it, whether the recital is business, marriage, accounting firms, real estate development, family, whatever your recital is, once you have maximized it, you get to sit with the masters. You have a limited amount of energy. You don't have unlimited energy. You know that. That's why you get tired. That's why you get fatigued. Why you get worn out. You don't have unlimited energy. Since you don't have unlimited energy, I highly suggest you don't waste any of it on something that you can't change in the past. Why in the world would you give one more second of emotional energy to something that is never going to change? Everything that happens to you in your life, whether it's a trauma, whether it's a disease, whether it's somebody treating you in a certain way, there's a lesson in all of it. No limit people understand the lesson in life and therefore celebrate the lessons. You know, somebody said many years ago, Anything worth doing is worth doing well. But here's a new one for you. Anything worth doing is worth failing at. And that's why you have to endure the nightmare. Because if you want to give yourself to something, give yourself to something that's worth failing over. You're not a failure because you fail. You're a failure because you quit. There's a lot of destruction going on in the world right now. There's a lot of loss happening in the world right now. And I've actually been through a lot of chaos and I've been through a lot of destruction. And one thing that I've learned is I learned that I had to keep my emotions in check. And that's the same thing I tell other people when they're going through trying times. And that does not mean that you're not going to have emotions. But by keeping your emotions in check, I mean don't make decisions based on your emotions. 
they're going to lead to a bad place. Don't let that happen. Instead, if you feel yourself getting emotional, take a step back. Detach. Look around. Think about the long-term implications of the decisions that you're making. And make your decisions based on logic and based on reason and based on long-term outcomes. See, a lot of times we allow ourselves to be fed and to be programmed and to being afraid. I mean, you watch the news and read the newspaper, you'll be scared to come out the house. So what kinds of things, what kinds of thoughts are you feeding your consciousness? What kind of things are you putting in your mind that will enable you to either move forward or to justify why you're staying where you are? And when you get to that point in your life where you're not cursing the things that come your way and blaming the things that come your way and particularly blaming it on somebody else. What if they don't accept me? What if they don't approve me? You don't need their approval. The Most High God has approved you. The creator of the universe has already accepted you. Now you have to set your face. This is your hour. There is greatness in you. God is calling you out of the ordinary, out of what you're used to. He has things in your future that are going to break barriers. Sure, there will be people that find fault, think that you're missing it. That's okay. Nobody has ever done anything great without opposition, without people thinking they were missing it. Keep your face set. I believe that clarity is uh, intimately connected to imagination. So as we're getting clear on something, we're beginning to see what that thing is, right? That we're getting more clarity on. And, and we now know, is you're getting clear around something, you're actually building neural networks as if that image or that experience had already occurred. And so it's, it's important to, to have clarity on what you want to create, to have clarity on the type of uh, partner you want to have in your life, to have clarity on um, the things that you want to learn. And you hear it all the time. She hurt my feelings. How's that possible? How can anybody hurt your feelings? Your feelings come from your thoughts. No one can hurt your feelings without your consent. No one can embarrass you without your consent. These are choices that you have that come from the way that you think. Wake up every single day thinking about how can I change my life? Get you some people that can teach you some stuff that you don't know. Get you some people that have done it successfully and learn from them. Take some seminars, workshops, read some books on how to manage a business that that's the job that you should be playing, that you should be working for somebody else. You should be looking up to somebody else and seeing what they can teach you. Success leaves clues, young man. Always listen and follow people who are doing what it is you want to do at the level you want to do it and learn from them. Fear is the thing that reminds you, oh, I need to go get more information. Oh, fear will keep you up at night studying. Fear will take you to a coach or a mentor. Fear will cause you to eat a slice of humble pie. When you plant a seed, which is really your goal, you have to nurture it. You have to protect it. You can't do one set of crunches and expect to have a six pack. Some of you know you've heard this before, that fear is false evidence appearing real. Now it's time to literally biohack the impact that fear has had on you. We learn, we do again. We learn, we do again. That's the way, that's the life attitude. The first step before anybody else in the world believes it is you have to believe it. There's no reason to have a plan B because it distracts from plan A. But you gotta have a vision that keeps you in the fight even when it feels like you're about to quit. And there's a tremendous amount of liberation that comes when you accept the fact that you're always going to need to give yourself a push. For 10 years, if you didn't avoid doing what you knew you needed to do, what would you be like? Is you rarely exercise your self-discipline muscle. You just go with the flow. No backbone whatsoever. And that's perfectly fine until you start whining and complaining about your lack of success. Whining and complaining about your lack of progress. Whining and complaining that you're not gaining any momentum and you can't seem to get ahead in life. The thought of giving up can come, but you gotta get it out. You gotta persist. If you are waking up thinking that it's gotta be more to your life than it is, man, believe that it is. Believe in your heart of hearts that it is. But to get to that life, you're gonna have to jump. 
people get stuck at a certain level in life. They can't see things being better for them. And they think that this is it and this is all they deserve. This is all they've ever seen. It's been passed on to them. And they think that this is it for them. Something is happening. Something is taking place. The seeds that you've sown, they are still working for you. The time and energy you've sacrificed, they are not in vain. I stopped by to ignite your fire. I stopped by to have you confront fear. I stopped by to have you look at what it's cost you and to make a bold declaration the next time it rises up, you rise up a little bit higher than it. I stopped by for you to no longer make fear your enemy. And because of so many mistakes, too much failure, that makes me never complain because I get used to that. Greatness is not this wonderful, esoteric, elusive, godlike feature that only the special among us are will ever taste you know it's something that truly exists in all of us the truth is if you want control in your life if you want to make things happen you have to be able to expect that you're going to get a no and do it anyway and when i start changing that kind of mindset of beating myself up because of my mistakes and start looking at the possibility of my doing better, of my making the adjustment that would enable me to do what I want to do successfully, things begin to change. See, that good plan does just the minimum to get by. That great player pushes his body past the limit. He leaves every single drop of blood on the field. And whatever he does in life, he wants to be remembered as the greatest. This is your life. It's time for you to get busy living. Because for far too long, you've been getting busy dying. How many hours a day you waste or how many hours a week you waste? You may have arms and legs, but unless you know three things, number one, who are you and what your value is? Number two, what is your purpose here in life? And number three, what is your destiny when you're done here? If you don't know the answers of any of those three questions, you're more disabled than I. When you are struggling with what to do, who you are, what's your next move, you are in an identity crisis. You are struggling with just who you are. Okay, who you are. Many people won't allow themselves to ask for help because of, of pride. Pride cometh before fall. Because of ego. Ego means edging God out. No, ask for help. Not because you're weak, but because you want to remain strong. My soul is not contained within the limits of my body. My body is contained within the limitlessness of my soul. I have not allowed my disability to stop me doing most things. I think the biggest disability that we have as human beings is unbelief. If you didn't go what you've gone through, you wouldn't be who you are today. Like many of you, I was concerned about going out into the world and doing something bigger than myself. You always have a moment in your life where the direction you're going you will have to make a decision to keep going or you turn back. You should only listen to this if it's leading you down a path that makes you feel more alive. And that's the point. The point is to get in touch with something that makes you feel great, but not to let yourself starve or be stopped by a fear that you'll fail, by a fear that it can't be done. Every day, it's not going to be a good day, but every day is a blessed day because you are above the ground. There's a part of you that has long suffering. There's a part of you that refuses to quit. There's a part of you that no matter what comes your way, you just got to bounce back up. There's no time to give up. There is no time for sorrow. This is the opportunity, an opportunity of a lifetime. You're on a spiritual journey, period. 
and we're all going to end up in the same place. The parts of your mind, the parts of your brain, the parts of your psyche that are al alarm systems, so that's the anxiety systems, they're trying to think something through. And they're using fantasy to think it through. This is actually a form of thought that's torturing you. I know from personal experience that depression has a way of transforming a typically happy and outgoing person into someone who is sad, withdrawn, and frustrated with life. Frustration comes to what you thought. When what you thought doesn't happen, you get frustrated. It's when darkness forms, clouds roll in, and life gets heavy. Sometimes we feel it alone. Those times surrounded by sadness. And in those moments, what are we to do? My best advice on this is to first recognize worry for what it is. Admit what it does and then decide you now want to be free. It first starts with decision on your part. You've got to have inner strength for this fight. It's not your outer strength, that inner strength, that when I can't do as I would, I'm going to do as I can, but I'm not going to stop doing to the best of my ability. Those who take responsibility for their life and are wanting to move on and put the past behind them are much more likely to gain freedom, success, and happiness. When you're around happy, inspirational people that are successful, it makes you feel better and you get inspired. And if you act on that inspiration, your life will be more fulfilled. Stop looking at manufactured nonsense that is keeping you boxed in. Celebrate the breath and the exhale, which is being alive.